Hi guys and welcome to Mindset Learn Extra. This is Grade 12 Maths and tonight's show is brought to you by Liberty. Last week we covered financial maths, calculating the value of N in a formula with Liesl. And tonight our topic is financial maths, annuity, bond, repayment, sinking fund problems and Mark will be taking us through it. How's it Mark? Hello, good to be back. Nice to see you after my two week break. I know, have you missed us? Totally. I know you've missed me, obviously, terribly, hey? Definitely, but I've been watching every show at home. I'm learning a lot all the time with the matrix and it's been great. Good, good. And matrix, okay. I hope you've been tuning in, grade 10s and 11 shows, because now, now you're really getting ready to crack on. Um, guys, please only send us questions that are relating to the, co to the topic that we are covering. Um, if you stick with us throughout the year, we will eventually get round to the section you are having difficulty with. I promise. And next week, our topic revision, well, our topic will be trigonometry revision. And lots of you have been asking us about our schedule. So if you are in a group, the topic next week is trig revision. And I'll be working on trig revision. Oh, so there we go. We're all excited, hey? <laughs> Me are too. Yeah. Yeah. That's next week. Okay, Good. guys, and the show tonight will start off with a lesson on financial maths. And after the break, we'll work through an example or two. Then lastly, we'll be taking your questions on the topic, and this will be the last 15, second, 15 seconds, 15 minutes of the show. <laughs> what am I talking about? Join us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Our Twitter handle is also at learn extra, and it's an XTRA. So get chatting to me. I'm Indiana. This is Mark. So if you have any problems, please let us know and we will get through them. So while you're watching, shoot us questions and we'll get around to them in the third part. I also have a Casio calculator to give away tonight. to one of the best questions pasted on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Post it on Facebook. Paste it on Facebook. We will be announcing the winner tomorrow on the Facebook page. So after the break, we'll be back with Mark. Hi guys and welcome back. Grade 12 Mindset is fine, it's your turn. That's what I love about the Grade 12s, when it's their time, they start to say on Facebook, it's our turn, it's our time. So Lani said it's matrix time and kids must go to sleep now. Oh, shame. <laughs> but Grade 10 and 11s, you guys, I still love you and you're still important. But Grade 12s, let's have some fun. So get chatting to me. My name is Indiana and Mark's with us and we're going over financial maths. Uber exciting. Take it away. Thank you so much, Indiana. As promised tonight, we're going to be talking about annuities, which is the bulk of the grade 12 stuff. It's a really important section, but it needn't be very difficult if you understand what an annuity is. So I've done a bit of preparation for tonight and I put some stuff on the board. So if we have a look there, what I've said to you is an annuity is a set of fixed payments which form an investment, which is either going to be a future value investment or repay a loan, which is a present value. Now, I just want to stress something for all the viewers at home. When we're talking about this annuity, we're talking about the same amount at the same frequency all the time. So if you're going to pay monthly 100 Rand, you've got to pay 100 Rand every single month for it to be an annuity. But if you pay 200 Rand, then 700 Rand, then 900 Rand, that's not an annuity. So I just remind you, an annuity is when you're paying a fixed amount at a regular same interval all the time. And so what we do is we look at the two different types of annuity formulas. And so we have a, a future value annuity. Let's not go too far. And we have a present value annuity. Now what I want you to have a look at over here, if we look at our screen, is that X is my payment amount. Okay, if I can just get my pen over here. This is my payment or my installment amount. I is the interest rate and that has never ever changed. N is the number of payments. So that's quite important. N is the number of payments. Okay. And I, we, we've spoken about already, is the interest rate per period. Now I just want to make a few things clear here. Because quite often, it's very easy to say future value is when you're saving. And a present value, which we'll get to now, is when you have a loan and you're paying off a loan. But the questions become quite tricky. So I want you to try and have this visualization at home. If we're starting off with zero and we're growing to some amount in the future, so we start off with nothing and grow to some amount in the future, I always say that this is a future value. So it takes us from nothing and grows up to something. Quite an important concept and there's a reason why I show it like that. Let's now look at the present value. Okay. And so the other annuity formula that we have is a present value annuity formula. And again, X is always your installment amount. That is the amount that you're going to be paying every month. 
or you're going to be paying every quarter, or you might be paying every year, but it's the same amount that you keep paying at the same payment frequency. Very important to remember that. N is the number of payments. I, of course, is the interest rate per period. But look at the difference in this formula. It's almost like things have been changed around a little bit. The lovely thing for you at home is that you don't have to remember the formulas. The formulas are given to you on the matric formula sheet. My advice is when you're practicing examples, print it or get your teacher to give you those formulas so you continue to work from them so that you become more familiar with them. Very important. Now, let's just talk about the subtleties here of a present value. So what I say is when you've got a present value annuity, generally speaking, people say that the present value is for a loan. And they're quite right. Present value is for a loan. But what I say is you are taking some value down to zero in the future. So present value always takes something down to zero. A future value takes something up to zero. And that's important. And in one of my last questions, if we have enough time, I'm going to show you a real nasty, tricky Ricky where we're dealing with a lotter. Wouldn't we all like to win it? And we'll see how we can use a lotter winning and use one of these annuity formulas. So hang on for that. All right. In the end, I'm going to go to my first question, all right, which I've prepared. Exciting. I'm just going to move on there. And we've got an example up on screen. So I want you to have a look, and I'm not just doing the basics at home, okay? So tonight, through the four or five examples that I've got, I'm trying to teach you things that you must look out for when you're doing these questions. Okay, Veronica deposits a thousand rand into a savings account at the end of each month for a period of five years. Very, very important. We know that we are depositing the same amount all the time, and it is for the same period, and it's important for you to know that we're talking monthly. So straight away, I know I've got an annuity. It's a regular payment, same amount, same frequency. But there's a trick here. For the first two years, the rate is 10% per annum compounded monthly. So we know it's a monthly rate. And for the remaining three years, the rate changes to 13% per annum compounded monthly. How much does the investment realize? Whew. Before you panic and phone a mechanic at home, what we're going to do is we're going to unravel it very slowly. So I'm just going to do one little step at a time. But the first thing you've got to say to yourself, is this a future value or is this a present value? Am I saving for money going into the future or am I paying off a loan and bringing it down to zero? And I think it's pretty clear we're going to deal with a future value annuity. Okay, so I'm now going to work over here and I'm going to start with my solution. So future value annuity is equal to x. Then I'm going to put in my bracket. It's going to be 1 plus r to the power of n minus 1, and that is all over the interest. Now, let's get the information that I need. x is my monthly installment, and x is 1,000 rand. I'm going to lose my information, so I've just got to go back up the interest rate, and now we've got to be very careful, because for all of you at home, you're probably thinking, what's going on here? I've got two different interest rates. And so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to snip this annuity and I'm going to have to divide my question into two different parts. So I'm going to work with my timeline and I'm going to work for the first two years. You see, when we deal with an annuity, you can never tamper with it. As soon as you tamper with it by changing a payment amount, by changing the interest rate or doing anything to it, you have to stop your annuity. So your annuity is like this black box where it's fixed. So I'm going to work with my annuity for the first two years and thereafter, after two years, something changes. So I'm going to have to stop my annuity. And I want you to see, I, I'm sure most of you at home could do the annuity for two years, but then you say, what do I do with it? And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to stop the annuity and see how we grow and work with the second part. So the interest rate is 10% per annum compounded monthly. Remember, 10% is 0, 0,10. That's 10 hundreds. You don't need to put the zero. And that is being done monthly, so it is over 12. So I've got the interest rate, uh, and the duration is two years. But please remember that N stands for the number of payments. So in two years, if you're paying monthly, it would be two lots of 12 payments, and that's going to be 24. So I'm going to, whoops, we seem to have a problem with our pen. She's coming apart at the seams. Okay, so we're going to have 24 payments. So now I'm going to put this into my calculator. Or I'm going to put it into my formula sheet over here. 
x is 1,000. Um, 1 plus, and the interest rate over there is going to be 0, 1 over 12. And I don't need to simplify because the calculator worked that out for me. 0, 1 over 12. That there is to the power of 24 minus 1. And that is all over i, which is 0, 1 to the power of 12 again. See? Oh. So, I can go and work that out. And I'm going to put it on a calculator, but I'm going to show you a very clever trick because I actually don't need that answer just yet. Let's put it on our calculator. Let's see what happens. But I, I don't really need it at this stage. So I'm going to press 1000. The beauty of this calculator is that you can type it exactly as you see it. So I'm going to press my brackets, but now I want to see my fraction. So press your fraction button. And at the top, there's another set of brackets. So again, press your brackets. And what have I got? 1 plus another fraction, 0 0.1, and that's all over 12. And that there is to the power of 24. So press your power button, 24. Let's scroll down. Let's subtract 1. And let's scroll right down to the bottom where I need another fraction because that now is 0 0.1 over 12. All over 12. And then I'm going to just scroll out, close my brackets, press equals, and I get my answer. And that is the total amount that Veronica would have had after the first two years. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to pause this question and I want to talk about the subtleties as to what is going on in terms of the changing interest rate and some of the tricky rickies here. So I'm just going to minimize that and let's go down my screen. Okay. Oopsie. Whoa. We're really battling with this pen tonight, aren't we? No, man, you can do it. No, no. <laughs> I know, no, I, I know I can. Talk me up, Indiana. Yes, Keep yes, talking you, me no, up. No, you can do it. You don't need to worry. See, look at that beautiful yellow line. Okay, let's look at our timeline so that we understand a little bit about what's going on. Okay. Can you run out of virtual ink? I think I'm running You're out of virtual out of ink. <gasps> Is okay. it working? Uh, we're battling. Sometimes it doesn't like certain colors. Try another color. See, okay. see, strange. So now, what is going to happen is that I'm working from now up to the fifth year, and we know that after two years, okay, the interest rate changes. So I'm growing my annuity up to there at a certain interest rate. And then the interest rate is going to change for the last three years where I'm going to get a new interest rate. And the question is, how do we bring everything together so that we can make sense of all of this? I have calculated this first bit over here. Now, I want you to almost think as if you are going to a bank. If you have worked out this first amount and the interest rate changes, you have to stop your annuity. And it's almost like you now go put that money into the bank and you're going to start your next annuity. But think about it. If you put your money into the bank, what's going to happen to it? It's going to grow with interest. But it's just compound. It's not an annuity anymore. So you get this full amount over here that we would have got. And that is going to grow with interest over here for the next three years. Whoopsie. <laughs> I'm really having fun tonight. Okay. So that's going to grow for the next three years at my different interest rate. And down below, I'm going to create a new annuity. And this new annuity... is going to be at a new interest rate and I think we said that that was 13% and that is going to be for three years. So look very carefully because now I'm going to put it all together but I don't think I have a big enough screen. Let's see what happens. Just to extend a page down there. Oh there my at word. The bottom. These yeah. things are massive so they kind of yeah. like go right Forever across and the ever. screen. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Okay, so I'm going to just break it down. So annuity one, the first part. I've got a thousand. I'm going to grow it. If I can try to remember all the different things, it was one plus the interest rate, which is 0, 1 
over 12 to the power of 24 minus 1. And that was all to the power, I mean, interest rate 0, 0,1 over 12. That is the first two years. Look what I'm doing at the end now. That's very important. That will now go into the bank and it's going to sit in the bank for three years at the new interest rate. And the new interest rate was 13% per annum compounded monthly. So that is almost like the deposit amount. This grows, okay, so it's 0 0.13 over 12 because it's a monthly rate, but for three years to the power of 36. Please understand that's only what your annuity, which you pay for two years, will be worth at the end of five years. But we have another three years worth of payments at a different rate. So now I'm going to press plus. Okay? And now I'm going to press plus, and I know that I've still got a thousand. Okay, let's just extend my page a little bit. And this is going to then be one plus the new interest rate, 0, 0,13 over 12 to the power of 36 minus 1 and that is all over the R0,13 over 12. And what I've got to do is I've got to add those two totals together. In case you're wondering, look at the interest rate there. So this annuity is for two years. For the next three years the interest rate has changed because that was my other interest rate. Because after the second year the interest rate changed to 13% per annum compounded monthly. And we still continue. So this annuity is intact. For three years, nothing changes. It goes for the three years at that interest rate. So I hope that's making sense. It is a, a, a subtle question with a, a few little tricks in there. But if you can try and understand what happens when you stop or change a payment or the interest rate, you've got to stop that annuity. You put that annuity into the bank and grow it with interest. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my calculator. But the beauty of it all is I've already got the first answer. Okay, well, I'm going to start from scratch. Why don't I just start from scratch? You have a look at home. Let's hope I can remember everything. So, this is going to be a massive thing that I put in the calculator 1000. Open your brackets. Fraction, open your bracket at the top. It's 1 plus fraction 0 0.1. That's over 12. Let's close the bracket, and that's to the power of 24. That's my two years worth. Minus 1. Then I'm going to scroll down to your bottom. That will be 0 0.1. And that's all over 12. Scroll out. Okay. There. That would have been my annuity. Now what I'm doing is I was growing that for three years because it sits in the bank growing interest. So this is now just compounding. So it would have been that amount. And now I do the compound formula. So it's 1 plus the interest rate. But the new interest rate is 0 0.13. That is over 12 so it's 13 percent and that's monthly and that there was to the power for three years so if it's monthly that's 36. That's the first part. Now I've got to add the second annuity. These are massive on the calculator. So then I'm going 1000. Let's put it into this annuity formula. Let's put my fraction. Let's go and put up there so it's 1 plus 0 0.13 that is all over 12 uh oh okay the calculator has run out of memory isn't this fun so this is cool I'm going to show you how I'm going to solve this because the calculator has run out of memory so all of you at home watch very very carefully I'm going to get the first part of my solution so I'm going to press equals now it's going to put it on screen. But hopefully as matric students and you the big people, you can never round off to the final answer. So I'm going to store this in my calculator and I'm going to store this under A. And I don't know how big your calculators are, at, I mean your screens are at home, but there's a little A there. Oopsie. Let me just go back to where I was. Okay, press equals. Now I'm going to tell it to store it into A. So I press shift and there is the store, STO store. I pressed it twice, sorry. Let's go shift, store it into A. And you'll see it says that the answer has gone into A, which is nice. That's I'm very now, fancy. Yeah, if you ever want to call that back, all I do is I go recall, so I press and you'll see RCL, click A, and it gives me that total unrounded. 
So now I'm going to go and do the second calculation of my annuity, which is that 1,000 there. So I've got 1,000. Open your brackets. Let's do this whole annuity story again. Open there. So it is going to be 1 plus 0 0.13. All over 12 because this thing was monthly. Scroll up. Really battling with this pen tonight. I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> this was for three years, so it's power of 36. Scroll down 0 0.13, 0 0.13, and that's over 12. Let's go and close my annuity. Boom, and there's that answer. But we're not finished. Because it's the one annuity we've stored. This is a second annuity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this into B. So I'm going to say shift store into B. All right. And that's stored into B. So if I just show you now, if I scroll here, I have got that part I've stored into B. That top part I've stored into A. Try another colour. <laughs> if all else fails, try another colour. Okay. Patience is a virgin. Let's keep going. I've stored that into A. And so now what I can do is I can go and say, right, my final answer is I'm going to say, let's go and call up A. And let's go and call up B. So I'm adding those two together. And this over here now is my final, final answer. So what am I? 175,030 runs. And 79 cents. So hopefully you can see that 175,030 rand and 79 cents. I'm going to leave that up on screen and then the viewers can see that. Perfect. I think we're going to take a pause there. It's a massive, massive formula. And, and you've seen that sometimes it doesn't even fit on the calculator. But you just need to understand the formulas and substitute in. There's not a huge amount of thinking once you've substituted into the formula. And let the calculator do the rest for you. Fantastic. Hey guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. Just in case you were wondering, this is the same calculator as what Mark's using on the, on the TV screen, I think. Pretty much. I've been comparing it while, while you guys have been learning. It's identical. And I've been listening. Identical. identical. And yeah. I have been listening, obviously, Mark. Guys, get your questions in on the page. Um, during the break, it's, it's a nice time for me to pull the teachers to my side so I can show them all the questions that you've been asking so we can get to answer them. So do that now during the break. Don't get a cup of tea. Get working on those cell phones and let me know if there's anything that you're not understanding what Mark's been talking about specifically. Let's go to a break and we'll see you now. Hi guys and welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the show and you're enjoying Mark's lesson. I know I am. I'm learning lots and lots. Financial maths is awesome because it's super practical um, and I, I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks Mark. <laughs> guys, let me know how you're doing. If there's anything you're struggling with. If there's anything that you're not understanding, please let me know. There's no such thing as a stupid or a silly question. You never know. Sometimes you ask that question and actually everyone has been wondering about that. Even if it's the smallest tiny little question. You know what? I'm going to go straight to Mark and he's going to tackle us, he's going to take us through some questions. Yeah. Thanks. Before I dive into my next question, there were three things that Indiana asked me off air. First of all, there was a Kenny that called in and said, the calculator that I'm showing on screen, are we allowed it in matric? His teacher might have said it's programmable. It's definitely not programmable. You're definitely allowed to use it, whether you're in an IB private school or whether you're in a government school. And that's the FX82ES or the ES Plus. Sharp have an equivalent calculator. Just check with your teachers, and if you're not sure, just phone the show and we can help you out. Okay. So this calculator, whilst it does all of these amazing things, it isn't programmable as such, so you're okay with that. Um, I had another question. Someone said you were doing uh, annuities with compound interest. How about the simple interest? An annuity is never simple interest. What happens with an annuity is that you would have had a deposit go in. That starts growing and the next deposit comes in and together that's a new amount which starts growing. And so it continues to just snowball. But that formula is very, very clever. 
So it is a compound interest formula that determines the total at the end of your period. So it is always compound interest. Annuities are not simple interest at all. And I think there was a third question where someone said, okay, Mark, you've done annuities with changing interest rates. How about doing something with a changing payment at some stage? Now, try and listen very carefully if you can. It's the same kind of setup. If anything changes with an annuity, either the payment amount or the interest rate, you stop that annuity. So if we were going to change a payment, let's say pay 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 for a few years, and suddenly you want to pay 1,500, you would stop your annuity at the last payment of 1,000, and that goes into the bank. Then you start your new annuity with 1,500. So it's a totally separate annuity, and you'd be working at whatever interest rate is given. And so that first annuity that you stopped, remember that goes into a bank and then it starts getting compound interest. So it's no longer an annuity. You've taken the full amount and deposited in the bank and it grows with interest. So hopefully we've answered those three questions. I'm now going to dive up onto my screen and I want to talk a little bit about a sinking fund. Okay. Some of my students call them stinky funds. They're not stinky at all. They're actually quite pleasant and sweet scented. So let's have a look at sinking funds and the basics of sinking funds. So generally what happens is that you will start off with something. And I'm calling it an asset. Maybe the accounts teacher say, hey, how can it be an asset if it depreciates? Let's not stress about that. But you've got something. Maybe you've got a car now. You've got some machinery. You've got something. But what happens is that you want to replace it in the future. Okay? So sometimes the thing that we've got will depreciate in value. So if you've got a car and you want to replace it in a few years' time, your car will depreciate but it still has a value. It has what we call the trade or scrap value. However, if you were going to replace your new car, it's going to go up in price because there's inflation. So if a car costs you 100,000 Rand this year, in three years' time, if you're replacing it with a new car, it's going to cost more because of inflation and perhaps some other costs. So, so what happens is a sinking fund is a very careful way where you do some financial forecasting. And so what you do is you try and predict how much do I have to have saved to have bought something new? So what you do is you get the value of, say for example, your car in maybe three years' time. Let's find a color that's working here. So we will say, let's find out what the car will be worth in three years' time. And then what we do is we say, well, what will the same car cost you in three years' time? Now the difference between those two is how much cash you need to have. So a sinking fund is a very clever saving scheme. And the value of the sinking fund, oopsie, okay, the value of the sinking fund, I've just lost everything here. Oh, brother. Oh no, what's happening <laughs> now, Mark? Know. I seem to have lost my page. There are so many gremlins tonight. Let's not stress about this. I'm going to go and create a new page. When in doubt, doubt create a when new When in doubt, one. create something new. Okay. So, so what happens is, if you have got something now, we will create a projected amount. And we will say, this is what something new will... Oh, shakarunis. I'm really battling out tonight. Where's our razor? Oh, you know okay. what? Our pen is battling. Can you know I replace what, guys? the we're pen? Gonna, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to give Mark a break by taking a break. Guys, don't leave those seats. We're going to be back with those gremlins or we're gone. See you in two seconds. Welcome back, guys. And hopefully the bug is fixed. Mark is now taped to this little pen and he is way to go. Hey, Mark, are you ready? I'm ready. Thanks. Fantastic. Before I carry on, I need to let the viewers know this is not my fault. Before I came into the show, James dropped the pen and it's fallen apart. And so we've tried to tape <laughs> it up. So every now and again, the nib is coming out. So just bear with us at home. Yeah, mistakes All right. happen. Mistakes Game happen. Shame, James. We can't blame him forever. <laughs> no, we're going to keep blaming him for a long time. Anyway, <laughs> let me quickly go back. Okay, if I'm talking over here, okay, about this sinking fund, we're saying we've got a, something right now. Okay, it has a value. But we know that it's going to increase in value because of inflation. But the thing that I have is going to depreciate in value. Think about you've got a car now. You want to replace it in a few years' time. 
you're going to trade in that car. So you're going to get some money for the car that you have, but it's going to be worth less over time because it depreciates. And we call that the book or the trade or the scrap value. Then, of course, we're going to buy something new. That would be costing more than it is now because of inflation. The difference between those two is what you need to have saved. And we call that the sinking fund amount. So if I go back, the value of the sinking fund okay, is the difference between what you need in the future. Take away what you're going to have as a deposit, which is your scrap value. But let's look at an example. So we're going to set up a future value annuity to realize this amount. So here's my example. Okay, you don't have to worry. It says a new compressor is purchased for a panel beating shop for an amount of 185,000 Rand. Okay, all important stuff. It says if the machine depreciates at a rate of 20%, and that's what I was talking about. It's going to be depreciating. It's going to be worth less over time. On the straight line balance. Now, I hope that everyone remembers what that means. Straight line balance, can you remember? Simple interest, all right? So it's going to depreciate 20% per annum, that is per year, straight line balance. And it says, what is the scrap value of the machinery after three years? So I've got to work out what that machinery is worth if it's now 185000 in three years' time. So I'm going to jump to my next page where I'm ready to do this thing, and we're going to work out the scrap value. Okay. So the scrap value... is then going to be, take your original amount, which is 185,000. And then the simple interest formula is going to be 1 minus the interest rate. Okay, so in here I'm going to be putting the interest rate, but that's an annual rate, which is 0, 0,2, multiplied by your N, which is the number of years, and they tell me it's 3 years. Remember, this is simple interest because simple interest is straight line. Can you remember what compound depreciation would be? Because we use these very carefully chosen words. Okay, so straight line is simple interest. Reducing balance is compound interest. So the question didn't say that, but you must remember, if it says on a reducing balance, compound interest. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go and work this out. So it's 185,000. I'm just trying to see if I can fit it in my screen. Okay, so 185,000. One, two, three. Open up one minus 0 0.2 multiplied by three. And then when I close that, that there gives me a total of 74,000. Okay, so my scrap value is 74,000. Now, hopefully at home, you know what that means. When you take your machinery somewhere, they will give you 74000 back for that machinery. That's almost like a deposit. You're going to offset that against the new price. So we must remember that. Write that down somewhere at home. I'm going to try to remember in my mind. So now, we're going to get to the next aspect of this question. And the next aspect of this question says to me, okay, that the new machinery is going to increase by 7.2% per annum. And that's inflation. Things are going to increase in price. And they say to me, what will the new machinery cost me in three years' time? So remember, we're going to be replacing this in three years' time. All right. So the amount at the end, and this is going to be compound interest, is 1 plus R to the power of n. You've got the interest rate, which is annual. You've got your number of years. Your P is the amount of the, this machinery, how much it costs, so now I can find the amount at the end. So 185,000 is growing over three years at a rate of 7.2% per annum. Now remember 7.2% is 0 0.072, that is seven hundredths, and that is to the power of three because it was three years. And again now I'm just going to go put that on my calculator. So let's call up my calculator. So here, I'm going to put in 185,000, and I'm going to grow this at 7.2%, so it's 0 0.072, 
and that there is to the power of 3 because that was 3 years. There we go. Now, I'm allowed to round off this answer even though it's not my final answer for the whole calculation because this is part 2 and they said what is the value of the machinery. So when your examiner asks you for a final answer at a part A or part B or part C, you have to round off. Okay, so this is the final answer for this subsection of a question. So what am I? 227,906. Let's go. And that is comma, I remember it was comma 7, some, uh, comma 1, 7. Okay, comma 1, 7. Now we're going to go to the next part. All right. And the next part says to me, all right, what is the value required in the sinking fund? Now, hopefully at home, you know exactly what we're talking about. We're saying over here, how much do you need to actually buy the machinery cash? Okay. So we know that we've got some money and we know it's projected value. So I've got to go back and I've got to say, well, all right, I'm getting 74,000 Rand as my deposit, which is my scrap value. I've got to take that off this over here, which is the 227,906.17. So the 227,906.17 minus the 74,000. And that is the value that I'm going to have in my sinking fund. So let's go put that on a calculator. I'm just going to say, let's please minus 74,000. And that is going to be 153,906 and 17 cents. And that is what I am now going to save for. So if I can just sum it up, a future value annuity, when we're talking about a sinking fund, says you're going to buy something in three years' time, not now. But you want the power of compound interest to work in your favor. So we're going to say to you, what must you put away now and every single month so that in three years' time you've got that amount of money? How clever is that? So you're going to be putting away, so what a sinking fund is creating a future value annuity. But all of this first stuff was to help me get to the total that I need for the future value annuity so that I could go and solve. Now, Indigo, will you remember this total? I'm of having course. to remember all of these things on, on screen. Oh, shame. Okay, what do you want me to remember? 153,906 and 17 cents. Will you remember that? Of course. I'm writing it down. Thank you. Now, we are going to go and save and get to the sinking fund. So, let's just read the question very carefully. It says, a sinking fund is set up to realize the amount required to purchase the compressor. That's what I was saying. So we're going to try and save to get to that total. Now what's very interesting is they talk about an interest rate, but the interest rate is something that is quarterly. So it's 9% per annum. Okay. Just battling to get our pen to work again. So the interest rate is 9% per annum compounded quarterly and your payments are made quarterly and that's nice because we don't want to have a different interest rate and a different payment frequency it's starting at the end of the third month now hopefully you realize at home every three months is a quarter okay quarter of a year will be three months and when you have got an annuity if you're paying at the end of the first quarter that's fine I'm just going to be paying if you pay at the end of the third month end of the sixth month end of the ninth month end of the 12th month, you are just paying every single quarter. So there's no technicality or trick there. And then I'm paying at the end of each quarter, it says calculate the value of the quarterly payments. So in other words, how much do you have to save every three months so that you realize that total, which is quite important. Okay. Now, usually you'd pay monthly in the real world, and that's because we get paid monthly. So almost every calculation in the real world is monthly, but there's no reason why we can't do things quarterly. So now, I'm going to work out a future value annuity. So it's 1 plus r to the power of n minus 1. And that's all over r. And if you think very carefully, the thing that I want is to work out x. x is the actual quarterly amount, the deposit, the installment value. 
F V. Can you remember what that scrap value yes. was? Okay, great. Okay, 153,906. Okay, wait. 153906. Five, yeah, and 17, 17 cents. cents. Cool. Yeah. And there's my X. And now I'm going to go and put everything in. So it's 1 plus, let's find our interest rate. I mean, soon you're going to be teaching this show. It's 9% compounded quarterly. So remember that 9% is going to be 0.09 .09 compounded quarterly. You must divide by 4. I'm doing this for 3 years. So it's 4 quarters in a year, 3 times 4, they are going to be 12 quarters. So I know that that's to the power of 1. That's my 3 years. Subtract 1 in the formula. And then over here, it's going to be R, which is 0, 0.09 all over 4. Now the big question is, how do I go and get X on its own? Well, all that I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to say, let's take this future value amount and let's subtract, I mean, let's divide by, let's try and color code it so that people can see what's going on. I'm going to say to get X on its own, I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide that to the other side. So... By changing the subject of the formula and isolating for x, I'm going to divide. But I'm not going to go and write it all out. I'm going to get my trusted Casio calculator, and I'm going to let this friend go and work it out for me. All right. So I'm going to go and type in the 153,906.17, and I'm going to say... Let's go and divide. Now be very careful because I need to make it divided by one whole thing. So I'm going to put a bracket over here. Okay. And now I'm going to put everything in. So get to my fraction. On top, put in 1 plus fraction 0 0.09. I know I was doing that quarterly. Okay. And I think if I remember correctly, that's to the power of 12. Scroll out, subtract 1. Scroll down to your bottom, and that there is also a fraction, 0 0.09, and that there is all over 4. Scroll out, scroll out, close your bracket, and now I can press equals. And so what I've got on the calculator here is the X, and the X there is going to be what that quarterly deposit is going to be. And remember, it's at this stage, because it's the final, final, final answer, you round off to two decimal places. So it's 11,314 rand and 78 cents. Okay, so 11,314 and 78 cents. I'm going to move that a little bit over so that it's clear for you to see on the screen. Perfect. Okay, that is a sinking fund. Huge concepts. All of these concepts are going to take you a few days at school to unravel. I'm kind of glossing over them in about 10 to 15 minutes in an example. But hopefully you're understanding future value. I'm trying to realize amount in the future. And what I was saying here is what is your installment? Indigo? Fantastic. Okay. I We've think, got yeah. eight minutes left and that means eight minutes of questions. So let's get going. Brian has been shouting at me on Facebook. Brian, don't shout at me. I'm getting to it. Okay. Brian wants to know, um, I think it's for the second part of the question. Right. He says, how do I know that I have to use the compound formula for the second part? And then he put in brackets the new value of the machinery. Excellent. Excellent question, Brian. It's very important. So we give you all these clues for the, the depreciation. Because in the depreciation, we say on the reducing balance. That means compound depreciation. Or we say on the straight line balance. And that would be me simple interest depreciation. But when we're talking inflation... Inflation by default always means that it's going to be compound interest. So 99% of the time it's always going to be compound interest because something grows and it increases by percentage every year of the previous amount. So that will be compound interest. So 99% of the time it's compound unless the question says it's growing simple interest, but that very rarely ever happens. Okay, so just remember inflation is always compound interest. Okay, I think this is a similar question. It's the same, same, but different, different. Okay. This one's from Boyson, and Boyson wants to know, for example, two, number two, um, why did you use the compound formula and not the simple? Okay, oh. I've just answered that. Boyson, it's exactly the same kind of thing, because it's inflation, and something is growing with inflation that's automatically compound. Okay, fantastic. Okay. You know what, guys, do we have any other questions? 
Mm. Um, I know Techo Hatso said, why didn't we use the new amount? But I, won't, I wasn't quite sure what that you were referring to, ladies. So please, if you do have time, please send me something to let me know what exactly were you referring to. And, and maybe I can answer to that. We did use the new amount. Okay. So what we do is we grew it to say this is what it will be worth after three years because of inflation. And that new amount, subtract the trade or scrap value, is what your sinking, of fund, a sinking fund amount needs to be. So you always subtract in the new, from the, uh, subtract the scrap from the new, that gives you your, your sinking fund value. Okay. okay. Maybe Mark, maybe you can unpack this for me. Okay. Sintler said, isn't that a straight line, question mark, because he's using the compound formula. Does that mean anything? Uh, when we talk straight line, okay, that is when we're talking about simple interest depreciation. Okay. okay. So it, there's a bit of a contradiction in what she's saying. Straight line, simple interest. Compound mm. is reducing balance. But that was for reducing, not for the growth. Okay, I see, I see. Okay, okay let me just have one last check and see. I'm checking my Twitter feed. I'm checking nothing on Twitter. Nothing today. Guys, you've been very quiet on Twitter today. Um, okay. Okay, this, I don't know if, if I use the future value formula or geometric, geometric series or sign or SN, mm -hmm. will, will give him the same answer. Okay, I know what they're asking there. Sorry. Okay. The, the, no, like, it's I'm fine. I'm, I'm trying to like... I know how to decode <laughs> ladies speak, so okay. that's fine. No. <laughs> Thank I, goodness. I, I think someone is asking, if they use the geometric sum formula, will they get the same answer as if they use a, a future value annuity? And the answer is a yes. In actual fact, the future value annuity formulas are derived from the section of sequences and series. My advice, though, to the person who's asked that question is to maybe use the future value annuity formula, and when you do present value, use the present value annuity formula, because they're easy in terms of just substituting in. But essentially, it's one in the same section. So when you are doing geometric sum formula, that essentially is also, if you want to, have a future value annuity. So you can use it. It will give you the same answer. My advice is to probably stick with the, the annuity formulas. Okay, yeah. fantastic. And I just want to say thank you guys for actually saving me and sending me through a few more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Calvin wants to know, months or years multiplied by period compounded, is this the same thing? Months or years multiplied by period compounded. I, I'm not entirely sure what we're talking about there. Um, let me just try and understand. With an annuity, it's slightly different to some of the other stuffs when we, we're dealing with finance. And I always say to my students, N is the number of payments. Try and remember that, okay? So N is the number of payments. So if you're doing monthly, but it, it, you're paying monthly and you're doing it over five years, well, the five times 12, which gives you 60, That'll be the number of payments. So always remember that N is the number of payments. I is the interest rate per period. <clears throat> so that would be, for example, the interest rate monthly or the interest rate quarterly, which is why you sometimes see the interest rate divided by 12 or you see the interest rate divided by 4. We always put in the interest rate for that period. So if you're doing something monthly, you always got to convert the interest rate to a monthly rate. You divide by 12. And N is the number of payments, which is why you're often multiplying by a value. So 12 in a year, 8 years, you'd multiply 12 by 8. Fantastic. Okay. I know that we've only literally got how much time left? One minute left? Two and a half minutes. Let me just have a look here. Okay, this one's from Chazibana, and he wants to know how does sequence and series relate with financial maths formulas? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't answer that in an easy way because I yeah. would need to show something That's on what the I thought, screen. So I thought I'm asking Mark these huge <laughs> big questions. But I started alluding to that answer when someone said, can you use the geometric sum formula to answer financial stuff? And yes, you can. So the sequence and series formulas, what happens is when something grows by 12% per annum and it's compounding, that would actually give you an R in sequence and series of 1.12. Because you would be increasing by 12%. So if you use sigma notation or a geometric sum and you use your R as 1.12 and you use your A as your starting value in a geometric sum, you get to the same answer. So you can actually use sequence and series to do your financial, but again, I, I don't think it's advisable. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, guys, I think that's all that we have time for for today. And Dile, I'm sorry that we couldn't get to your question and all of you that we couldn't get to. Just leave. 
just leave the, your questions on the Facebook page and we will answer all of the questions, guys. I promise you, I promise you. And don't forget that we do have the calculator giveaway that we are I'm going to be posting all of the winners from today's show's grade 10, 11 and 12 all tomorrow. So guys, keep your eyes peeled to the page because the winners are being announced. I just want to say thank you so much for everyone for joining us. Anissa, you've been amazing. She wants to know if we if Mindset offers challenges for schools to compete. Now, Mark, that's a pretty cool idea, don't you think? Definitely. And also sometimes in the Matric Matters supplement, there are wonderful quizzes and, and opportunities to answer there. But I think it's something you must raise with our producer. Oh, fantastic. Guys, that's, Anissa, that's something I'm definitely going to raise with the producers. One more thing, guys. If any of you grade 10s, 11s or 12s have any past papers, please, 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 can you send them to us via um, our help desk? or onto Facebook or just let us know and we would love to receive those so we can put them onto our page so other learners can, can download them and essentially use them. Guys, thank you so much for such a brilliant, brilliant show. Okay, guys, don't forget that physical science is on tomorrow. We're giving away three more calculators as well. So there's three more chances. Hope you guys are all tuning in to learn more and to learn extra. Don't forget to join us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Our Twitter handle is at learn extra. And thank you so much for all the lovely comments about Mark. <laughs> Mark, they love you. Thank you very much. And I must just apologize to viewers. We've only looked at FV, Future Valley Annuities, tonight. I know that's the only time that we had, but I'm doing a revision session in a couple of weeks' time, and there I'll make sure that I choose to put in some questions on the PV formula so we can work with some loans. But it's been great working tonight, so take care. Cheers from me. Bye, grade 12. See you, see you next week.